Hi, everybody, and welcome to the second episode of Lens Den and Friends. Um, today, our special guest is Terrestrial Roots. Uh, did I say that right? Yes, you did. Okay, cool. What's up? Um, what's up? Here with the owner. Um, if you just want to introduce yourself, say a little bit about it and the company. Yeah, um, so I'm Cindy, and I run Terrestrial Roots. Um, we've been in business for a little bit over a year. We're a CBD-based um company so we make um cannabis products from topical creams to oils and we do have some edibles and we're based out of queens new york city all right awesome so speaking of um i noticed on your profile it had um latin x and women owned um if you want to talk a little bit about that and i also noticed um you do a lot of advocating and like educating um, yeah, the absolutely. Community. Oh. Yeah. Um, so I, I definitely emphasize women in Latinx owned because it's not quite often that we see, you know, women in business and right. ca- the cannabis industry is actually one of the first industries to have the highest percentage of women in an in industry owning businesses. And so I think that's oh, wow. important. Yeah. I think that's really important. Um, to talk about and to 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 really emphasize because you know it's 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 good to see more you know women dominating a business space um and entrepreneurial you know spaces and and then I definitely emphasize Latinx own because along with you know kind of trying to support the feminine community we also have to support the people of color community right. and I, yep. I identify as a person of color um you know i'm latinx and a lot of the people that are are you know interested in my company and a lot of people that buy my products are also people of color and so that mm-hmm. i i'm open to all my audience is, does not exclude anyone but right. i'm i'm here to educate especially you know people that come from minority communities and also just like communities that don't really have the access to this type of knowledge when it comes to cannabis use or you know understanding the medicinal benefits and how we can Mm -hmm. use cannabis in our everyday life um a lot of people especially in the minority communities um don't have the proper access or resources and don't know where to find this information so i made it Mm -hmm. kind of my duty to to help out in that respect um so that's that's why i'm excited latin next yeah thank you no that's that's really amazing um have you had any problems or like any um obstacles that you've had to face being um proudly women-owned latinx-owned and also being based in new york um I guess you could say there's some obstacles with all three of those um mm-hmm. sub like topics. Like for example, I would say being based out of New York City, um, and not just New York City, but being based in the United States, where you know, like cannabis and hemp laws were still really gray and unregulated. Right. Um, you can't really you could you can obviously plenty of people have started CBD companies and cannabis companies, especially in states that are fully legalized, but you have to go through certain laws. And so like you, you know, like just getting like a merchant processor, like a credit card processor for Mm -hmm. your website um, was pretty much impossible for a CBD company because really, yeah. So most, um, most banks don't accept won't won't like uh process your transactions um so i was just getting shut down website after website after website and i've spoken to other people who have cbd companies and like we all go through the same kind of struggle of like yeah like not finding a good merchant processor um but luckily now there are some processing uh merchants that Mm -hmm. that are open to cbd companies um so that that kind of saved my life but just just that's a really hard you know obstacle as business because sometimes your your site is shut down and you have to tell anyone who's trying to make an order like oh sorry i'm not sure when we will be back up and it's just like really difficult um and even people in states that are legalized have that problem because it's not legalized federally it's just state by state um so that that's a huge obstacle as a as a cannabis business um and then some i wouldn't say that i have too many obstacles as a woman in business because i noticed that the cannabis community community is especially welcoming to women and so that's also why i love being part of this community because Mm -hmm. 
they love seeing women who are, you know, behind the businesses. Um, it's just like, it just all makes sense, you know, and I always like to say, you know, kind of in my own hippie philosophies, just like cannabis technically, although it can be a male or a female plant, you know, the part of it that's psychoactive comes from a female plant. So I feel like, you know, because it's a female plant and we're, you know, working with the female plant to create all this amazing medicine, it's like, it's only right that a female would be behind that. Um, so it's like we're that's, serving that's each cool. other. Yeah. So it's like yeah. we're serving each other. That, the plant is that's serving such a us. That's a cute and, way of thinking about it. Yeah, like, and, okay. and I think that's also like a big reason why so many women are in business. Like, you know, if you start to like unravel it a little bit, not so much on the surface, but just like what's going on, um, you know, with the plant world and with humans. Um, and then like as a Latinx owner, I would I, I can't say that I've had too many obstacles. Um, I've been very like welcomed into a lot of different mm -hmm. spaces and never never like excluded just because, you know, because I'm a POC or anything like that. So it's at the cannabis community um, can definitely be more inclusive um, because, like every other business and in every other industry, it kind of gets a little bit controlled by you know how do I say this like it gets kind of colonized and, and gets mm -hmm. overran by the white community, you could say. Um, so it's okay. important that we, you know, like, especially people of color, talk about this as much as we can, um, like just having a more inclusive community, a more inclusive industry, having more black mm -hmm. and brown and Latino owned, you know, business owners. Um, and I think it's important, too, because if you look at the stats, like the statistics of people who have gotten arrested for right. you know possessing cannabis or mm -hmm. for you know for smoking in public or just anything relating to marijuana um most of the time there's a high percentage of black brown and latinx you know um incarceration so it's it's definitely it's definitely something that you know it, we have to now that it's becoming legalized all over the states it's like we we need to make sure that like you know it's not just this profiting game that it's mm -hmm. like there's some some underlying race issues and discrimin discrimination issues that that need to be um handled too right um what's a one stigma you wish wasn't attached to the cannabis community just that pretty much that thc is bad and cbd is good like i noticed that a lot of people are like oh okay so thc is what gets you high so that's what you don't want to use but cbd is medicinal it's mm -hmm. like that's absolutely not true at all like thc and cbd work best together as a medicine and thc right. by itself still has a lot of medicinal properties so all that although cbd has some properties that thc doesn't have and and will benefit the body in certain ways that thc won't it doesn't mean mm -hmm. that THC is bad for you because it, it still helps a lot of other, you know, parts of the body and it still helps you function in certain ways that CBD um, can't do by itself. And especially the psychoactive properties, you know, under the right, doing it under the right intentions and, you know, with the right care, um, you know, and sort of like with the right consciousness, like you can, you can use it, you know, definitely medicinally in, right. in all kinds of mm -hmm. ways so i just think like people need to realize that the whole plant like the whole marijuana plant or you could say the whole cannabis plant is medicinal and and has so many benefits mm -hmm. um and that yeah, there's no part of, yeah and there's no part of the plant that is bad for you because i i hear that sometimes like people rave about cbd and then they're like you know especially like older folks i guess who have mm -hmm. been sort of um brainwashed under you know like you know you could say like uh reefer madness or just any of these you know um stigmas that have been put upon cannabis over the years um mm -hmm. how would you recommend someone to start or um like what to start with when it comes to cbd yeah um so i think the first question is like you know why do you want to use it 
and then kind of realize figuring out like what's your best option so like if you want you can use it you know orally like as a cbd oil or if you want you can just use it topically like if you have a certain skin condition cbd can help a lot with that so maybe the oil is not the best way maybe you know mm -hmm. you, you can get like a topical cream that you can apply to that part of your body directly um so right. i think it depends on what you want to use it for and then after you figure out like what's the main reason that you want to use it for then you figure out your dosing so then you kind of think about like okay um you know how much of it should i take so like let's do like a couple examples then so like what if um someone wants to take it for anxiety yeah so for anxiety i always recommend taking it um sublingually so like a cbd oil tincture that you can apply under the tongue um uh -huh. because that way it goes directly into your bloodstream and it kind of like you, you'll feel it within you know everyone's different but sometimes 15 to 30 minutes and and mm -hmm. it just pretty much calms your entire system down you know, it works right. to, to, to block out the whatever is causing your receptors to create this anxiety in your system. It blocks that out. And then you just don't feel as anxious or nervous after, you know, about 10 to 15 minutes, depending on how quickly the CBD oil will affect you. Um, so that would be your best option. Like for anxiety, I would say a CBD oil. Um, and then for like physical pain, like let's say if you have joint pain or arthritis yeah. or if you have some kind of like mm -hmm. you know muscle ache or tension in your back like a topical might be really good because you could that way massage that directly onto those areas and and it'll help a lot speaking of i did want to um talk a little bit about one of your products the pms relief cbd yeah um the cream mm -hmm. um is there uh, anything like, like what makes it different from other like yeah creams? so pretty much every single one of my topicals have different ingredients in them that are kind of designed specifically for specific you know like um uh, body ailment so mm -hmm. the pms is designed specifically for hormonal regulation uh menstrual cramping tender breasts like i use like geranium oil, which is really, really great for hormonal regulation. Mm -hmm. And so that that would seep into your skin and then help with your hormones. Also, some of the essential oils, such as like uh, there's lavender in there as well, just helps with calming. So the scent itself helps your body just kind of relax a little bit if you're feeling like irritable. And then there's also clove and ginger oil in there as well. And so those um, oils help with pain so they have like analgesic properties that kind of are, are numbing to the body so it just helps um, regulate those that pain a little bit like if you apply it directly on your abdomen area if you have menstrual cramps you'll feel the relief within minutes like sometimes I feel it right away like I'll put it on or other mm -hmm. people have told me like oh I put it on and it was amazing like it works so well and when I use it personally like I feel the relief like within a couple minutes um, it's it won't necessarily take your cramps co away completely because it's it's not magic, but it does help yeah. in the sense that it will relieve like the pain from, you know, let's say you have 80% like really bad cramps, like from 80 to at least 40 or 30. So you're not in so much pain anymore. And then the CBD helps as well to kind of just like regulate that pain. Um, so you're working with the CBD and all these other great oils like ginger oil clove oil geranium oil there's also clary sage um all working together to to kind of just like relax all the nerves in that area and then also you, it's sensitive enough all of those oils are sensitive enough to apply like on sore breast and you can also apply it to lower back in case you have lower back pain um so it's just also like i guess with the product itself i'm just reminding women and you know anyone who's like interested in cannabis medicine that like mm -hmm. there are major you know healing benefits and pain relief benefits when it comes to like pms as a whole right yeah um are there any other like specific um products of yours that you wanted to touch on or like just speak briefly about um yeah i mean all of all of the products are you know really great like i've everyone has 
you know, raved about one or the other. So like we have, you know, like I have the CBD honey, which is, you know, I, I always really recommend this if, you know, some people don't want to take the oil because they're just, they just don't like taking oil. So it's like honey is a really great alternative because you can put it in coffee or tea. You don't have, or you can just eat it raw. It tastes amazing. Mm -hmm. And the honey that I get is actually unprocessed raw honey that I collect myself um, at a bee oh, farm wow. up, upstate New York. Yeah, in Greene County. So like I have a relationship with the bee farmer and then he lets me come to his bee farm and like, he'll, you know, I get the pure honey straight from the bee farm. So it's really, really healthy for you. And, you know, so you're getting like all the nutrients from the honey. So the CBD honey, I know a lot of people when it comes to anything like edible, whether it's like drinks, food, anything like that, and it's cannabis, um, it's always about like how does it taste and you said it's amazing but how does like do you get the cbd taste you don't taste anything like you don't it just tastes like honey so you won't taste like gotcha. cbd or anything um it just mm -hmm. tastes like honey and okay. you know if on if it's like a thc honey sometimes you will taste like like it, it'll right. have a more weedy flavor um because the thc mm -hmm. is much more like potent you could say but the mm -hmm. cbd alone doesn't really taste like anything so oh. once it's like mixed into honey it just tastes like honey um and i've had people who use it and they're like yeah i i, I took a couple tablespoons and like i felt just so much better throughout the day or someone who has like knee pain and she said when she she took like half, mm -hmm. half a bottle um when i used to have the smaller bear size bottles and she said that like her knee pain went away for like a few hours after that so I was like wow that's amazing to know that like it's that powerful and yeah yeah and so that that's one of our my I guess favorite products you could say um and then mm -hmm. we talked about the PMS and then the other one that I would kind of highlight on is the our pain relief bomb it's really great because it's like a natural tiger bomb so i kind of followed mm -hmm. the recipe of like tiger bomb and then uh, like also a couple other um you know like pain relief bombs but and then i created like my own natural version of it but i just added cbd to it so it's like you're getting you know this awesome potent pain relief bomb and um mm -hmm. but it's all natural and there's no like you know nothing in there that could cause harm to your body and then you're also right. you're also getting the benefits of cbd at the same time and a lot of people right. like to use it for like arthritis like i have a lot of um, older folks that buy it for like mm -hmm. you know joint pain and stuff like that so it's, it's like a, a really nice um gift for like you know like your mom or dad or grandma love that all right um one thing that i just um it's not really a question or anything like that but i just wanted to highlight it that um you're about and most of your site is in both english and spanish so i just i think that's pretty awesome thank um, you yeah, yeah i um you know i was really i started kind of reflecting on the fact that like i am a latinx owned business and you know how can i how can I express more of that? Or how can I own that more? And mm -hmm. I'm just like, nothing on my side is in Spanish, you know? So it's like, how could I call myself a Latinx owner? And then like, if right. someone who only really understands Spanish or only reads Spanish goes on my site, they should be able to understand it and possibly order something um, as well. And so I, I kind of had that epiphany and I, I made sure that I like translated pretty much 90% of the site um, to Spanish and English. Um, one thing I wanted to also touch on is um, you hand make all the products, correct? Yeah, everything is handcrafted by me right now. Um, eventually, I'd like to have like a production assistant because then I could handle mm -hmm. some of the other aspects of the business and not focus so much on making everything myself. But everything will always be handcrafted. Um, that way, we can always have like make sure that it's you know a, the proper amount like of ounces of this and drops of that. And and right. everything you you know that like what you're putting in every jar and in every bottle is you know potent mm -hmm. and strong and and um and consistent. So speaking of, are they um are they made to order or do you like make them? As um, no, I in? usually have batches made already, and then you know depending on um the number of that I made for that specific batch, then you know once I run out, then I make another batch. But I don't; they're not made to order. Um, all the products last at least six months to a year and a half. So I and usually I don't I run I run out of my like batches pretty quickly. 
because I don't make like mm -hmm. um that many at a time just yet. You know, the most I make at a time is like gotcha. 20 of each product and then I'll start on a new mm -hmm. batch. Um so that's that's kind of like my process right now. One last thing is I have this little segment that I'm going to be doing on this show, mm -hmm. which is called uh, What Wheel You Say. Okay. And um, there's five things, and I'm just going to spin the wheel. All right. uh, the wheel is going. Just let me know when to stop. Okay. And stop. So it's going to be um, Throwback Thursday, which is just how you first started smoking and um, any uh, stories on like your first times um yeah so uh i i tried smoking weed you could say for the first time when i was 15 and um mm -hmm. i think i just one of my friends was like hey you know like i'm we're gonna go scythe do you want to come and i knew that that meant like you know go smoke weed and so i was kind mm -hmm. of always intrigued by cannabis so like when I first even knew what it was, I was like definitely trying that whenever it like comes into my, <laughs> you know, life. I'm like, I'm just going to wait for the opportunity. And when it comes, I'm with it, you know, like I'm going to do it. And mm -hmm. so that was the opportunity. And then when my friend asked me, I was like, oh, here it is. Like the opportunity presented itself. And so I was like, yeah, let's go. And so it was my first time. And, you know, I didn't know what to expect. I didn't know anything about mm -hmm. like how to smoke or anything. And so and everybody there already had like, you know, scythed before and they kind of showed me how to do it. Like they passed me the joint and they were like, you know, hold it in and then like all this stuff. And I like coughed the lung out because I didn't know how to do it right. <laughs> but, you know, it was really funny. And then and then I was just like, oh, that's not so bad, you know, and I'm I'm 15 years old. So like, what do I know? Um, And then I, I go <laughs> home and I'm like stoned and it, I felt great. Like I wasn't like freaking out or anything. I was just like, oh, so mm -hmm. this is what it is. You know, like this is what everybody's talking about. I guess this is what it feels like to be high. <laughs> so I was like just more observant of my body and my mind and like myself under, you know, um the influence of cannabis. Um, But I, mm -hmm. I, I loved it ever since the beginning. I, I was like, you know, cannabis is my, it was my first plant ally, you could say, like, the right. first plant that ever worked with me um, in any kind of way, whether it be medicinally or just like, you know, um, for mental health purposes, or it just, it mm -hmm. showed me that I could um, use something natural to kind of shift my mind and body a little bit whenever right. I yep. would like to. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I mean, I've been a huge advocate for cannabis ever since I was 15 years old. So and and all and i've learned so much more you know like i didn't know anything mm -hmm. back then so it's just it's just it's i've had i have had a very deep and um beautiful relationship with with uh, marijuana for a really long time that's beautiful and having had that like first experience um did you ever think you'd be in the cannabis industry or specifically working with like CBD? Absolutely not. No, I never in a million years would have thought that like one day I'll be making cannabis products and, you know, uh, having workshops, educating the public. I never in my mm -hmm. life had what well, that wasn't like anything I that was on my goal or dream list um right. I always knew that like it'd be really cool to have my own business or you know like uh, I always knew that like from a pretty young age um mm -hmm. but I never thought that that it would be in in cannabis so the fact that that I do have my own business in cannabis is kind of amazing just because I'm like I you know like it just it's something that I already love and advocate right. for so it only makes sense to to take that one step further and you know create something that I could you know give to someone else and it could help them so it's it's really great mm -hmm. i think that's all my questions do you have any questions or well, um, anything you want to touch base on no i just thank you you know for for asking me it's always nice to to reflect on on mm -hmm. myself and my business and and what i'm doing so i i look at these as as great opportunities um to get to know other people and i hope to to listen Definitely. to more of your podcasts in the future too well, i hope to have you back one day and um i also just want to say i love your logo thank you and um thank you everyone for listening and make sure to check her out at terrestrial roots co on instagram um same thing for the uh website which is terrestrialrootsco.com and it's t-e-r-r-e-s-t-r-i a o r o o t s c o. So just make sure to check her out, and um, yeah, definitely can't wait to check out more stuff from you. So thanks. All right, sounds good. Take care. Peace.